Uh, the oil market, export market, is complex. I picked that up uh, from the hearing today. We need detailed, accurate information, I believe, to conduct a proper assessment of increasing exports. Yet, Ms. Gordon, in your testimony, you say that accessing this information is difficult. In fact, you say we actually have more data, which I find quite stunning, about OPEC crude oils than about some uh, new American oils, crude oils. My question for you to elaborate a bit is, is uh, on, uh, on that. Why is this information so difficult to access? There are so many reasons why the information is not there. The first reason it, uh, is that the light tight oils are the newest kid on the block, so to speak. So they just haven't been around as long. In the 28 test oils that we've modeled in the oil climate index, we have Venezuelan oils. I mean, think about getting information from Venezuela. There's just there's there's UAE. There there are oils from all over the world, Indonesia, but we don't have any oils that are from North Dakota or Texas. These light tight oils. Um, there are one of the big problems is that in order to get information on oil, you do an assay, which is a chemical footprint of the oil. But everyone does assays differently. So the, when assays are reported, you can't compare oils to one another. So having more um, consistent reporting on information is one big problem. Another one, having met with DOE, is that apparently, and, and I think Mr. Sminsky could talk more about this, but apparently the Energy Department can't really collect data on oil freely. It turns out OMB, and I, I, I was kind of flabbergasted when I learned this, but OMB says this is duplication of effort. Industry submits data on oil. They don't, DOE doesn't set reporting requirements for oil. Although, when you read EPCA, there's room for this to happen. It just hasn't really evolved that way. So DOE is actually only getting the information that industry wants to report out. These are new oils. There's less information reported out. And then the third one I'll mention, one of our partners tried to purchase data because there is data that's owned by these big oil consultancies. And after negotiating for a matter of about a year, in the hundreds of thousands of dollars, they were told that the data wasn't good for sale okay, because that, it's competitive. You know, they don't want the academic sector to compete with the consulting sector. So there are a lot of concerns when it comes to oil data, especially as now more oils are out there. Well, I want to uh, use that last sentence as a segue to another kind of topic uh, that might uh, be appropriate now. Any discussion of oil exports must also be considered in the context of our overall energy policy and the realities of climate change. And you also touched on that. You've done an extensive analysis on the climate impacts of our nation's oil policies. In your testimony, you discuss preliminary research on the climate impacts of various types of American crude oils that could be exported if the current ban is lifted. Now, my question, given the transparency challenges that you just uh, described, have you been able to complete this climate assessment with the data available to you? No, none of the 28 oils that we've been able to model are the, we have U.S. oils that have been around like Gulf of Mexico, Mars, but we don't have, or Alaska North Slope, but we don't have any of the new light tight oils so far in the 28 test oils because data is just not available. So um, I, I'm prepared to yield back, but Mr. Chairman, this lack of transparency I believe is very concerning not just for our, our assessment of oil export policy, but, but for conducting proper oversight of the industry in general. If the industry is asking us to lift the export ban, I believe they need to provide the information that is so clearly needed to properly assess the very policy that they're asking us to expand upon. I yield back. 